Hi, this is Sumit. I am doing this second video with a lot of pain and on the request and advice of few friends and well-wishers. This is again on Mr. Siddhartha, the Cafe Coffee Day founder who left us a couple of days before. My relationship with uh, Siddhartha. I hail from the same place where Siddhartha come from, that is Chikmangaluru. I have my roots there. And uh, that place is known for coffee, that's a, that's a Malnad region. And the times when I grew up, okay, when I was a young uh, kid, 10, 11, 12, we used to hear only one name in the town, and that of uh, Mr. Siddhartha. He was, he, was, he was like a Dronacharya for all of us. Uh, people in that part of the region, everybody, whether it's a small uh, farmer or a big farmer, they used to go and sell their crops to only one company which was owned by Siddhartha. So when we heard, uh, when we used to hear his name, okay, I always had this imagination of uh, you know, some big guy. So uh, I, I can't put words to the way that Mr. Siddhartha has inspired me and people like me in that part of the world. It is very devastating and shocking when we all heard that Mr. Siddhartha committed suicide. First he was missing and later it was confirmed that it was a suicide. It's very shocking and uh, I think it shook most of us. The reason being, it's not about a suicide shaking us or it's not about a suicide or a, or a person's death which, which shook us like that. It's the fact that it was Siddhartha. The, the one who committed suicide was a visionary, was a leader, was an inspirer, was a motivator, was somebody who had bigger dreams, was somebody who had realized his dreams, was somebody who was disciplined, was somebody who was resilient, somebody who created multiple enterprises, somebody who created 50,000 jobs, somebody who, who has a unicorn company with him, you know, I mean, if you, if you club a couple of his enterprises. Now for such a man who has seen much world, who has met many people across all profiles, uh, who's been a motivating figure, who's been a, a leader uh, by all sense and means, for that kind of a person to commit suicide is something which you can't even think. And I think it is time that we really dig into this matter and understand what was the reason behind this. If it was a simple family thing, if it was something which is very personal, I don't think so. None of us would have you know, uh, felt like the way we are feeling it right now. I think that the reason for the real pain, worry, is because I was telling, I was telling a couple of my friends today, like, you know, what is the difference between a businessman and an employee? Do you think employees are less intelligent than any businessman? Absolutely not. It is the guts which differentiates between an employee and an entrepreneur. Okay, it's not the intelligence, it's not the caliber, it's always the guts, it's always the courage. Now today, what has happened to Mr. Siddhartha, the way he has ended his life, has taken out, has shut down the courage of several thousand people like us, or people who want to become entrepreneurs, the budding entrepreneurs. Now, at this juncture, it becomes extremely important to understand who was behind this suicide, or rather, a murder. If any government agencies, whether state or at the center, is remotely responsible, is even 10%, 5% responsible in the act or in the, I, I, I don't know if I can say killing or in the death of Mr. Siddhartha, then I think it's, it's time that we sit down, revisit, relook into the way that we harass, into the way that we uh, uh, draft the uh, taxman policies or the IT uh, rules and regulations on businesses, on businesses and business entrepreneurs. Uh, whether he was wrong, whether he was right, I think the question of wrong and right doesn't apply uh, in its plain sense in this case. Because in India, whether you have a small shop or small tea shop to a large enterprise like Reliance, so uh, all these businessmen are compelled to do certain uh, wrong practices. Now the question is who taught us? Who nurtured these? Who uh, made these practices, ill practices big? And who are compelling every businessman to indulge in these ill practices? It is a system. It is the government. 
Now, from decades and decades and decades, you compel every entrepreneur, every businessman to indulge in ill practices. And all of a sudden, one day, you wake up and say, hey, all these things are wrong. Okay, why are you doing like this? You should have done like that. Come on. You cannot bring any kind of change like this. You will break the entire system. Like the way you broke probably Mr. Siddhasa's conviction. I don't know how many entrepreneurs you killed today okay, with certain of your actions. Now, I don't think so any country or economy can be built like this. You really cannot build a great nation like this. There has to be a different way in dealing with businessmen. There has to be a different way. I, see, I totally understand if a guy is indulging himself in anti-national activities or something where there is he becomes he or she becomes a threat to national security or something, uh, you know, a greater damage to the country, which is irreparable then acting fast by any of the state bodies makes utter sense. But then look at the way you act upon uh, an individual who is no who is less harmful. Tell me what could have happened if you had given him more time. Okay, don't you give this time to uh, government entities which runs in crows and tours of losses? Doesn't the state, the government provide several thousand crores of aid to bail out the companies which are uh, the, the, the public sector companies which are facing huge losses? Don't you guys do that? Okay, so why, why have this uh, uh, stepmotherly treatment towards government, I mean enterprise and a private enterprise? Unless, you know, he's uh, not harmful in any manner to the country. So I think it is time that the system, the department, particularly the tax departments, revisit the way they deal with business houses. Okay, you have to deal with a lot of patience. You have to give them a lot of time. And then I think you have to support them. End of the day, these guys create jobs. They are actually lessening your problems. So what is wrong in, in giving them certain tax comforts? My personal experience on harassment, see, <clears throat> rather than my personal experience, I would, I would like to generalize this and say, a uh, lot of medium and small entrepreneurs like us go through a lot of harassment from a lot of state bodies, state and central bodies. Back in 2011, I had an experience like this, 2011-2012, where I had an experience like this. We got a scrutiny notice from an income tax uh, department, uh, from the income tax department, and um, they were to refund us a uh, few lakhs, some 10-15 lakh rupees of money. And uh, the notice said that, you know, that uh, some accounting is being, is go, has gone wrong and uh, instead of uh, the government refund, they were asking us to pay more taxes in return. So um, I was to reply uh, to the officer and I, I was made to go there in person and I had a, you know, I had a discussion for about roughly one or two months. He, he made me come uh, quite a number of times and uh, I think I handled the whole situation well. I didn't give him any hints. I didn't give him any loopholes to sneak in. So after two months, he, you know, this officer tells me, uh, quite a uh, uh, graded officer, he tells me that, you know, uh, okay, Sumit, so now it seems like, you know, uh, more or less everything is right, so I let you go free. Uh, just give me uh, a phone, I have to gift it to my daughter. So uh, I, I didn't say anything because it was some amount of money that I have to get back. So I said, okay, sir, fine. So I got, I got him a brand new phone worth uh, some 30, 40, 30, 35,000 rupees. And uh, now the story gets more funnier now. Uh, this gentleman calls me after two days and says, hey, can you come to my department? I said, yeah. And when I went back, <clears throat> so this officer tells me that, uh, you know, he picks up the phone from the same drawer where uh, the, the, way he, the way he put it in, that's the exact way that he, he brings it out and says, uh, you know, I gave it to my daughter, but uh, uh, it seems, you know, she loves uh, another phone. And he named a phone which uh, was the most expensive phone at that point in time, which was about roughly 55, 60,000 rupees. I didn't speak a word. I just took the phone back and I went to the shop and uh, <clears throat> I tried my luck to exchange uh, and after failing that, I bought another one okay, and gifted it to him. So, I mean, the, the, uh, in, today when I even say this, it, it, it sounds funnier, but, but uh, I, have, I, have seen, I have seen a lot of uh, you know, taxmen harassing my peer group. Okay, how? Uh, the harassment is very simple. They just make you to sit in their offices for hours, for hours and for hours. Okay. And eventually, when you realize that your absence in your enterprise is, is somewhat uh, taking you down, then you throw away the cash that they demand for. I mean, not just this. I don't really understand what is the need. Why can't we sit down and change certain policies? Why can't we make the life of a guy who is creating five jobs, 10 jobs, 20 jobs easier? Why can't we have the tax system very simple? 
why i mean why does it have to be 56 taxes when there are developed countries who are doing great with only two taxes or three taxes or four taxes so i think i think it's time that we uh, redesign relook and uh, and reinvent things with respect to policy making and see how it suits the current day demands otherwise you killed one today i don't know how many more to go